Hello, and thank you for joining. So I'm gonna have a look at animation overflow today and teach you a little trick in Storyline about this. I feel like a bit of a fraud with this one. You know when you get to the end of a meeting and you're like, that could have been sent in an email. That's what this video is going to be a bit like because it's such an easy trick. You'll be like, oh my Lord, how did I not know this already? Um, because Storyline really has its own overflow container already. It's just named something differently. So you might not have used it for that uh, environment before. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to um, have a little play around in Storyline to show you some overflow tricks in here. So it means that we can do things like this, where um, we've got stuff flying in, but it's all kind of contained. Um, you might use that for a trick like a laptop screen uh, where it looks like the kind of the screen is moving and um, we can do carousels with this as well uh, so here we've got kind of a phone screen we're using a you know a, a fly in fly out animation but it's all kind of contained within the phone screen um, and my magnum opus which is uh, which is this one here now I was going to talk through how we did this slide uh, in this call, but it ended up being a bit of a monster using quite a lot of my different tricks. So I'll tell you what, let me know if you wanna know how I've made this slide and all of the different things I did on it to get it working. Uh, and I promise if you either comment within LinkedIn or if you comment on the YouTube video saying, please Ewan, tell me how you did this, uh, then I will happily um, dedicate an actual, you know, its own video um, to go through all of the different kind of tricks on this slide I did here for uh, for helping you meet the, uh, the, the Connectus team. But with this being a quick trick, uh, I just wanted to keep it focused on the on the overflow. Um, so I'm gonna, we're gonna have a practice at it live in Storyline, okay? So let's just, uh, I'm gonna move up there because I don't think I should be using the top side of my screen. And we'll just bring up the Storyline file here. So I've got it, got it all, all here. And we're gonna use this template here. So let's just uh, copy and paste this page. <clears throat> and let's just neaten up my triggers whilst we're at it. So that's just gonna jump back to there. So you might have spotted my trick already. I'm just gonna get rid of all those. Remove that. I think everything else, I want this to come on the screen immediately. There we go. We don't need my wheel animation on this one now. So let's just have a quick peek. I think we should have a pretty blank slide at the moment. Just a bit of animation with the text coming in. If I find that my preview is taking a little too long to load, which it sometimes does, I'll pause this and jump back in so you're not having to wait too long from now on. So yeah, we've got a pretty plain slide on here. So let's have a think about this. Um, hamburger menu hamburger menu. So we're going to use a hamburger menu as a option on here. Um, commonly used as menu icons for um, what are they commonly used for? For mobile and desktop devices. Just pop a little text in there. No. So this is why I'm quite quite enjoying doing this live because you get to see uh, see the way I work as well with this one. Uh, so I don't like the different margins that we've got on that. So that is making me happier. So there we go, 60, 60 margins now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, the reason why I've gone for a hamburger menu is because I believe I know already that Storyline have got quite a few in their icon library. Uh, I might go, could probably just say menu. Now what I want is one that is a group uh, with lots of different free form objects in it. That's gonna be a useful one. So let's just have a quick peek at this one. 
that's pretty much exactly what I was after. Now, have you ever noticed Oops, let's just try that again. Now, have you ever noticed that sometimes when you grab icons from the Storyline Library, um, depending on how zoomed in you are or, you know, once it's published, they kind of have jagged edges, which is really frust not not too fond of that. Um, so all you do to get rid of those, if you ever find that your icons have got jagged edges, just give them an outline and it um, it just thickens them up a little bit nicely. Okay, so let's make this massive. So I'll lock my aspect ratios. Let's go 300. Maybe 400. What a wacky, what a wacky world we live in. Okay. So happy with that. So I'm just going to center that now. And Ewan should be on top. There we go. Okay. Just remove all of the alt text from these for now, but we'll keep the group. wouldn't usually be necessary to have alt text on a decorative image like this, but this slide is is literally talking about the hamburger menu. So as we filled this slide out, we're probably gonna need to reference kind of what that hamburger menu looks like so we kind of understand why we're um, getting to this. Anyway, so let's have a look. So we've got outside and then some inside here as well. So let's... Um, Let's add a bit of life to our hamburger menu. So I want you to um Oh, what should we do? I'm going to do a different one for each one, I think. Well, no, I don't want you to bounce. I want you to No, I don't want you to spin and grow either. I want you to swivel. We're going to do slow animations to help us see the point of what we're getting at here. And I want that one to come in from the top. I had never noticed that it actually adds a swivel motion path on it. Is that new? That's pretty cool. Um, let's have a look, see what zoom looks like with a movement on it. So what I'm doing, no, we can't do, so we'll do spin and grow. So I think those ones, Yep, I can enter that one from the bottom. Happy with a full spin. Uh, and we'll just get you to fly in, shall we? We'll go from the, from the right, I think makes sense with that. And then last but not least, we've got our um, get you to bounce in. Doesn't look like I can add any effect options to that, so we'll just have to see where it bounces in from. Um, again, I'd usually probably do this a little sharper, but need to get the point across of what we're doing for this video. Um, So, okay, they're all just, oh, no. <laughs> that is why. Got, still got some secret um, clouds somewhere. That's interesting. That's why, so the swivel doesn't have a motion path on it. 
just my cloud animations from the previous slide. Uh, didn't really show them animating in like I want to on the preview, so let's do a preview of this slide. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, there we go. So everything kind of came in a bit clumsily, yeah. There we go. From all, So we can see this bouncing in nastily over the top there. That's flying in from there, etc. So it's not quite as nice as I'd like it to be. So let's add our trick in. So first things first, I'm going to rebrand this to my colour. Should really know the hex codes off the top of my head, shouldn't I? But memory does fail me now and again, I'm afraid. I'm going to keep the outline black on that. But I am going to thicken it up one because I do like to give clear layout definitions, um, clear outline definitions on my work sometimes. Okay, looks like I want it to now, but it's still not animating like I want it to. So like I said, um, Storyline, um, okay, yep, we can still see it in, in my shot. Storyline already has an overflow container. Um, it's just calling it something else and making you think you can't use it for that, but you can, um, and you've got to use it for, for other things. So this scrolling panel here, if we add a scrolling panel onto a slide, And I'm just going to make this scrolling panel the size of my area that we're going to use. Make sure it's under there. And then because we've revealed the trick later, I just need to grab my hamburger. So 845 by 165. So I'm just going to move it over there temporarily. Put it back in. 845165. So it's now in my scrolling panel. Let's have a look at that animation again. Hey presto, it's as simple as that. Just add a scrolling panel, but don't make anything big enough where it can, where it can't fit in it properly. And it, it creates an overflow container. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, little trick that you probably don't know about. Well, you do now. Um, so yeah, you can just use these scrolling panels. Um, you don't have to use them for scrolling objects. You can use them to kind of contain um, stuff, movement and stuff like that within it. You've just got to be careful uh, because so the width of them is absolutely fine. You can have stuff as you can see bleeding out of the width of them. Um, but if you start then, if you if you have an icon that's that's like kind of bigger than the scrolling panel, um, it will create um, a scroll along the side of it, which can be fine in some cases. Um, but it means that mouse roll will then activate. So you've got to be careful with that. So if you're doing movements, um, make sure you've got your icon in there first. So if we just add a line movement pathway on this now. Just, just quickly. And I think if I just reverse the direction, um, so that's my starting position and that's my end position. Yeah, that works fine. So still no scroll on it. But if you did it the other way around where you um, started with your object out of the screen and moved it into it, So let's just do that now. As you can see, a scroll bar appears on it, which again, it can be fine if you've got the screen locked out because these are quite easy to cover. Like I could just put 
a white rectangle. No, I'm just going to do this quickly, but there we go. It's covered over now, uh, but the mouse roll will still activate it, uh, which is one of the tricks that I had to do with, with this um, beast here, um, which is fine when I was working on different layers. I'll go through that more, uh, you know, this is just to give you an idea of like, how do I make a container? As long as you got everything within the container to start, you know, if you just got everything there nicely in the container and then you're using animations to kind of flow in and along, just get that scrolling panel in place and it, um, it just nicely holds everything in there. So it was as quick as that. I really hope that was useful. Um, and as always, you know, sound off in the comments if you've if you've got anything that you'd want to see in more detail, um, or if you've got any thoughts um, on this trick. If you if you're thinking of another familiar uh, another trick like that, you know, get in there as well. Or um, or I'll be posting it on LinkedIn as well. So just you know, send your messages on 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 anything you might want to want to kind of understand more about, or if you want to get me deeper in into this kind of trick more than happy to but like i said um if you want to see so i'll just show this slide again if you want to see how i did um how i ended up working on this slide um and all of the different tips and tricks i kind of uh, put in here then uh, let me know on linkedin and um youtube and i will be more than happy to dedicate a video to this so thank you ever so much for watching. It'll say it at the end of the video, but all the usual tricks, you know, like, subscribe, you know, ring the bell so you get notifications of when I do new videos. And I will hopefully see you again soon. Take care.